Welcome to the lesson on 17.2, defining and evaluating the basic trigonometric functions. The essential question today, how does the unit circle allow the trigonometric function to be defined for all real numbers instead of just acute angles? Instead of acute angle, this implies that in geometry, we learn the right triangle trick. You should be very familiar with this particular shape. Um, you know, because you learn the uh, special right triangle unit in geometry. So let us say that this is a theta, and this is the, uh, because this is a leg right here, this is a leg, and this is a leg, and this is a hypotenuse. But we need to differentiate between the two legs, right? So this is a leg that's adjacent to the angle, so we call this the adjacent leg, and this leg is the opposite side of the angle the opposite side of you guys so that is called the opposite leg so we define the sine theta as the length of the opposite leg divided by the length of the hypotenuse leg uh, oftentimes <coughs> oftentimes we don't call it hypotenuse leg simply referring to it as hypotenuse is sufficient continuing on the cosine is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse Sorry, adjacent or uh, opposite. Sometimes it gets a little tricky and try to remember this. So we have uh, a little saying here, Sokatoa, right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent of hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite over adjacent, okay? All right, so let's continue on with the reviews from your geometry. Uh, there are two important triangles that you should know, right? That is 30, 60, 90 triangle and 45, 45, 90 triangle. So whenever we say special triangle, triangles, we're referring to these two right here, guys. They have a very special relationship. If you have, let's say, this is a 30, this is 90, this is a 60, the opposite of 30, let's say, is called x, then opposite of 90 is always twice that. And the opposite of the 60 is simply whatever that is, x times root 3. Some books, rather than writing x, simply give you the ratio. And we just put 30 over here. If that's 1, that's a 2, that's a root 3. And you could check to see if it meets the Pythagorean theorem, which is 2 squared. Is that, does that equal to 1 squared plus root 3 squared? And that's a 3 plus 1 is 4. Yes check it does so in case you forget the ratio uh, do a little test whether the Pythagorean triple I'm uh, sorry the Pythagorean theorem uh, is satisfied or not okay now looking at 45 45 90 if you write down 45 you don't have to write 45 here because these two have to be complement so we know that this one has to be 45 but I'm gonna write it anyways if this two are uh, length x, they're the same length, right? Because the opposite angles are the same. Um, this has to be x times root 2. And sometimes what some people do is actually just draw, without referring to the x, call it 1, 1, root 2. Now what sometimes happens is that we want the diagonal to be 1. Uh, so to draw a similar triangle, is that we divide all sides by, in this case, make that into a 1, divided by root 2. So that becomes a 1, that becomes 1 over root 2, that's 1 over root 2, or you, you could write that as root 2 over 2, it's the same thing, right? And in this particular case, uh, what we have here is, is a similar shape, like this, we divide everything by 2. So this is a ratio that you should be very, very familiar with. What we're going to do is we're going to be utilizing this particular shape. Uh, we're going to toss that into this particular uh, triangle. One of the essential questions was, is, the, one of the essential questions was, is that how does a unit circle allow a trig function to be defined for all real numbers, meaning all angles, instead of just acute angles, like this one? So what we do is we actually, let's say for example, uh, if we were to put 45 degrees over here, here, 
like here, 45 degrees, boom. Using this particular shape, if this is a unit circle one, then this must be root two over two and root two over two. So my x coordinate over here is root two over two, and my y coordinate is root two over two. So that's very consistent with what we have over here. But what could be also interesting is, what if you have drawn triangle this way, 225 degrees, like this. But from here to here is 45 degrees. So we know that the, this, if this length is one, the hypotenuse is one, knowing here, we know that the two legs must be root two over two and root two over two. See that? Which means that my x, because it goes to the left, is negative root two over two, and my y value here goes down, is negative root two over two. How do we define all this? Oof, okay. We'll jump ahead a little bit. Uh, in this particular shape, the way things work is, if you have an angle, my opposite side is y. See that right here, guys? Opposite side is the y coordinate, and my adjacent side is always the x, and hypotenuse is always r. So where we define this thing, coming back over here, is y over r, this is x over r, and this is y over x. Okay, now, so by drawing this right here, what happens is, see this right here, guys? What is my sine of 45 degrees? Well, sine is, by definition, y over r. My y is root 2 over 2. My r, in this case, is just 1. So my answer is root 2 over 2. How about for this one over here? 220, see this right here, 225 degrees. Sine of 225 degrees, whatever the angle may be, is still y over r. What's my y coordinate over here, guys? That is negative root 2 over 2, right? And my r is 1, so my answer is negative root 2 over 2. So sine of 225 is negative root 2 over 2. Let's try something similar. Well, over here, let's say if I were to draw a 30 degree angle here, like this, my length over here, I want, because it's a unit circle, I want my hypotenuse to be 1. Oops, that should be half, sorry. And this is half, and this is root 3 over 2. So my x coordinate from here to here is root 3 over 2, comma. My y coordinate is one half. Okay. So from here we could then <laughs> say the following. We found the cosines over here, so let's try so sines over here, so let's try cosine of 30 degrees. If you go back to the definition, it's x over r. We know that because r is 1 in this case, we don't really need to write that anymore, so it's just x. What is my x coordinate over here, guys? Yeah, root 3 over 2. That, that was it. Let us try about 210 degrees right here, guys. Let's try that. If you do 210 degrees, what's the angle here? That's at 30 degrees. So basically, we got 30, 60, 90 triangle. Do me a favor, label all the hypotenuse, the leg length, and then write out the coordinates for that. And then when you're done, answer the question cosine of 210 degrees. Watch, pause the video, and you try. We're back. So when you do this, we're looking back to this triangle. The opposite side of 30 degrees is half. And the opposite side of 30, 60 degrees right here is, from here to here is, root 3 over 2. And that's 1. Okay, so the cosine is defined to be x over r, but because we're dealing with a unit circle, r is 1, it's simply x. So what is my x coordinate of 210? My x coordinate goes to the left, so that is actually negative root 3 over 2. This is going down. So that's a negative half. So my x-coordinate is negative root 3 over 2. OK, 
Okay, guys, so we'll be doing a little bit more of these kind of questions in class. Uh, let's move on to the next page. So let's define the reference angle. The reference angle of a rotational of rotation angle is the acute angle from the terminal side of the rotational angle to the uh, x-axis. It should be, yeah, to the closest x-axis, right? So in this particular case, what we have uh, when you have a shape in the first quadrant is that you know what before we begin let's define this let phi be a reference angle and the rotation angle we're gonna go with theta okay so in this particular case that is my theta but by definition it is the acute angle from this the closest what? X-axis, right? So this is also a phi. So my reference angle also happens to be my actual angle. In this case, my rotational angle starting from the positive x-axis is a theta. This is in quadrant 2, right? Where the terminal side is in quadrant 2. But the reference angle is from terminal side to the closest x-axis, right here. So that's a phi. So these two make up a half a circle, which means that theta plus a phi is 180 degrees. So if you know the angle, we know that uh, phi is 180 minus theta, phi being the reference angle. Here, rotational angle goes from positive axis to terminal side, and from terminal side the closest x-axis is phi. So we know that from here to here is 180, right? So 180 degrees plus phi was the theta. So this plus this was the whole angle here, right? So this happens to be theta minus 180 degrees. I actually do not memorize this at all. I just draw the picture and I just go from there. And in this one, the theta, that's the angle, the rotational angle, and the reference angle is from here to here is a phi. So this theta plus a phi adds up to 360. So that's 360 minus theta. While we could create these equations, uh, committing this to memory is unnecessary simply because we could just draw it out. Okay, why is this important? Because what we're saying is that we could <coughs> basically the reference angle that we have over here is the fact that we're drawing the special angles here guys in each quadrant and using that ratio to figure things out that's exactly what happened okay all right so let's do example 1a and b we'll do it in class evaluate trigonometric function by using the quadrant and the reference angle to determine the sign and absolute value of the function value. Let's examine the angle first. 8 pi over 3, 3 goes into that twice, so that looks like it should be 6 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3, that is 2 pi. So, what this is telling me, this is 120 degrees, right? So a pi over 3 is making a full turn and coming back this way. But because they are called terminal angles, we could say that the sine of 8 pi over 3 is in fact equal to sine of 2 pi over 3. Now that we have this angle, uh, before we continue, the way I view this question, guys, this one right here, is that I think of that as 2 times pi over 3. But what is pi over 3? We know that that's a 60 degrees, right? So we know it's 120 degrees. All right? Let's draw a picture to help us do this problem. So 120 degrees is equal to, from here to here, then this means that this here is a 60 degrees. So all we're going to do is draw that 60 degree triangle. When you do that, this is 30 degrees. So, 
Opposite of 30 from here to here is half. From here to here is root 3 over 2. And this is 1, right? So we could actually use this angle right here, guys. So, um, instead of using 2 pi over 3, I say, hey, look at that. So we could say sine of uh, pi over 3. And that, by definition, for either one actually, was y over r. Right? Sine of theta is y over r. But what is r? Uh, this is 1. So that's equal to y. So what is my y coordinate? It's this one. So that is root 3 over 2. As we have more practice, guys, this will become much, much quicker. And you don't have to, it won't take this long. Okay? All right. So what some people do, instead of drawing a unicircle, even though I asked you to, I believe, uh, actually I did not. So what you could do instead is, at 120 degrees, so you know it's 60 degrees, you draw 60, some people feel a little more comfortable making opposite side of the 30, 1. So this here is a, a, a quaternal angle, which is 2 pi over 3, 120 degrees, right? And they prefer opposite of 30 to be 1, so opposite of 90 is 2, that's root 3. And we just use that definition, which is y over r, root 3 over 2. Boom. It works out the same. Okay. All right, guys, I think that's enough for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow in class, guys. Have a good night.